Hey, what's going on? I wanted to talk today about a hack that I came up with for the Arturia Keystep 37. Now, if you don't have the Keystep, you certainly don't need to buy it. You can do this with any cheap MIDI controller that has knobs and faders on it. Um, but I was talking to my friends about uh, macro knobs on synthesizers. So I believe that the Korg ModWave has this, uh, the Arturia Matrix Brute has it, and I believe the Hydrosynth has it as well. And essentially it is a macro knob that allows you to control a bunch of different parameters and you can set different values in the inverse or whatever for just one knob. And you get this really cool modulation just by sweeping one knob or one fader. Um, so let me show you what I'm talking about and then I'll explain how I did it. So here's a simple patch that I have set up and right now it is just a square wave. It's just a saw wave. On this first knob here, I have a couple of different parameters mapped to it. So I have the filter cutoff, I have the amp release, and then I have a little bit of reverb. So as I open this up, you're getting you know, multiple parameters, but I'm just moving this one knob. Pretty cool, right? I think that's sort of interesting. Instead of just opening the cutoff filter or just opening the release, being able to control a bunch of these parameters with just one knob is really neat. Um, moving along, this next knob here is going to be the sub oscillator. And then I also have a very short delay that's creating this sort of resonant sound and it sounds like this. And then using that in tandem with the first macro knob, Uh, on this one here, I believe I just have a big wide reverb. So I think I have two different VST reverbs, one panned on the right and then one panned on the left. And then I have different parameters set for them so that it's just sort of this big washy sound. Okay, and then this last one here, I have a tape delay that has some sort of modulation. And then I'm also going into a tape emulation. I believe it's Tape Mellify by Arturia. And it's just this sort of lo-fi knob. It's just essentially a lo-fi knob. All right. I think where this gets much more interesting is whenever you're running a sequencer you have the ARP going, and then you're controlling a bunch of these knobs together. So let me see if I can put something together real quick. pretty cool and I think it's also really inspiring if you're like me and you get bored with your hardware and the limitations of your hardware this is a really great way to allow your imagination to just open up and uh, just start brain vomiting and seeing if you can map different parameters and come up with a new sound also I think that this is a really great way to combat gear acquisition syndrome and buying new hardware that you don't need you can do this really, really cheap. You can go on reverb.com and you could find a used MIDI controller for super cheap. And likely if you flip that MIDI controller over and you look for the serial number, you probably can go to the manufacturer's website and then there might be software that's still available for you so that you could download the DAW that's included. Likely there'll be a free version of Ableton and then you can download a free VST synth and then you can create all this stuff and you're talking about like $50 versus buying buying some sort of hardware and then you need an interface and you need this and you need uh, the cables to run in there and then you need a MIDI interface because now you've got multiple synths and then you've got sound and you've got noise and it's not working and it just, this is a really great way to be able to avoid all of that.
Let me show you the hack. I set up a user remote script within Ableton for the key step. Now the key step has four banks of four assignable knobs that send out CC values. And that's really great, but the problem is, is that if I map them to something within Ableton and I close out my session, say for instance, I create an instrument rack or something like that, when I close out that session, it's no longer there whenever I open up a new session. And I liked something like the APC40, where it has macro knobs and they can either be locked to a specific device or um, they can move around and follow you depending on what is selected. So that's how I have this set up right now. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Take a look here, you can see that I have these four knobs and there's this little hand here that's showing that this is what is selected. So these knobs follow what is on here. But if I move to a different channel, this hand that's selected here, right? Maybe it's here or it's here. When I start moving these knobs, it's gonna grab the first four parameters. And I love that it just follows me around so that if I open up a fresh session, anytime that I open up any channel, it's just gonna grab the first four parameters. And if I'm making something like an instrument rack or if I'm making an effects rack, it's just gonna grab those top four. So for workflow sake, if I know that these four knobs are here, I think that it's just gonna improve my speed whenever I'm moving around because if I see this little hand hand here, I know, boom, I've got the control for these and I don't have to go mapping anything. It's already taken care of. Uh, let me give you an example here. Sort of a dumb example, but you get what I'm saying that it's nice to be able to flow around. Here's how you set this up with Ableton. And I believe that you can do this with any MIDI controller that has or sends out CC values. So you're gonna wanna hold down option and go to go, and then you're gonna select library. And then within library, we're gonna go to preferences, Ableton, and then you'll go to your latest version of Ableton. Now, I don't know if this has changed within Ableton 12, but it works for Ableton 11 on my computer. Ableton 11, and then you're gonna go to user remote scripts. Now in here, what you'll see, I've already created this key step folder, but what you will see is user configurations and then instant mappings. To get your MIDI controller to show up, what you'll need to do is create a folder and name your MIDI controller for whatever it is, um, MIDI controller. And then you're gonna copy over this user configuration file and put it into this folder. So for instance, I'll hold down option, and then boom, drop it in there. And then what you do is you go into this folder here and then you can change some of these values. Here's something that's important to note that the way that the, the range for MIDI channels, typically right, it's one to 16, but on the user remote scripts or this user configuration, it's gonna be zero to 15. So zero is one, one is two, blah, 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 right? Um, the global MIDI channel that I have set up for mine is one, so I have this set up as zero. And then the only thing that I wanted to change was just the encoders here. So I went to device controls and I found the encoders. The key step sends out four banks of four different CC values and you can change those in the software. You can change it directly here. I know what the values are here and I just wrote those numbers in here. So I have 47, 71, 77, 78. And that's that. Now, if you take a look in here, right, you can go all the way up to 16 encoders. Um, you've got buttons. For instance, if you have a MIDI controller that's just drum pads, then you can change the pads and you can have them be set to on off or momentary switches. There's a lot that you can do. But once you're done, you go ahead and save that folder, right? And then close it out. And then you have to close out Ableton and open it back up. Once you've done that, if you take a look in your control surfaces under preferences, go down and look for your new MIDI device. So for instance, this um, controller that I set up, MIDI controller, it's right here. And then I would select whatever that device was. So for instance, if I made those changes, I would select the key step, and then I would set the output to key step as well. And that's it. And then you're all set. Then you can start using this however you'd like. Here's another tip with this. For instance, if I just like these four knobs to be stuck on one thing always, like I like my master effects, I just want it always there. And even if I have a synth tracked armed or something else armed, when I move these knobs, I want it to just control that. 
you can right click this and then you can lock to control surface. And then now those knobs are always going to control that. I'm gonna to try to put something together and then show a couple of practical examples of why this is really useful and how I think it might be super inspiring. Here's one basic example of how to use this. So I've got a simple loop going on the circuit rhythm. I'll just play that now. And I'm gonna go ahead and take one of my effects racks and I'm just gonna drop it on the channel for the circuit rhythm. Because my little hand is here, I know that I have control over these parameters and I'm just gonna start exploring. Okay, here's another quick example. Uh, I printed down the audio from the circuit rhythm. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my instrument rack that I created earlier in this video. And then really quickly, I'm just gonna start exploring with the knobs that I have here. Maybe not even remembering what parameters I set up for those initially. So I'll just hit record. I'll go to my master channel. I'll select my effects rack that I have here. Um, and then I'll maybe start recording in some automation. Hopefully you found this helpful. My intention is to just start making instrument racks and effects racks that are just four knobs and to sort of use that to like reorient myself whenever I'm thinking about buying something and I'm like, oh, I wanna buy this pedal or oh, this synth has this feature and I wish that my hardware had it. Instead, I'll see if I can create it with the software and then maybe sort of scratch that itch by having the knobs and see you know what comes from that. If you get a chance this week, I would be super grateful if you took some time to listen to my album Precipice that I dropped probably like a year ago. And it's like 90% Nord drum. And um, yeah, I would be super stoked if you listened to it or if not, whatever, that's cool. Bye.